and welcome to the latest edition of Ghost News Network. We're actually brand new. Uh, there's some minor differences. As you can see, you can see us now. We're here uh, on camera, so you'll be able to see us as we go through our show. A um, couple new things. We're shortening the time, so we're going to run about 30 minutes, and uh, that's it. But we're still going to try and go over as much content as we can. Hope you guys enjoy the show. As always, I'm Dimitri Haritos. Michael Carnudo. And uh, why don't we start fresh? Mike, why don't you tell them who we are and uh, what we did? Well, uh, yeah. We are the Long Island Paranormal Investigators. Uh, we started out March 8, 2003. <clears throat> we were all friends, just kind of hanging around playing hockey one day. And uh, we started talking about the different urban legends of Long Island and Kings Park sites that came up. And I dared uh, two of the guys to go into the building that night, and uh, they were like, yeah, we'll go, we'll go, we'll do it, so um, we got a couple of walkie-talkies ready, so we had a video camera, flashlights, and uh, we were down on Black Kings Park, and they went inside the building, we were probably in there for about a good, it's like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, and towards the end, when they were ready to come out, they heard an extremely loud bang sound from the room that they were in. Ran the hell out of there, got back in the car, and took off. And uh, a week passed by, and me and um, Rob, who's a co-founder, we kind of were talking about all the different urban legends along Long Island, trying to investigate them and try to get to the bottom line to see if there was any truth to any of the urban legends here on Long Island. And we found out that they sell equipment that goes along with some of the theories of the paranormal. We started small, and we kind of kept it going then. And um, I'd say a couple of months after that, uh, Rob was actually going to college, and he, he was taking a parapsychology course. And he had to do a final project, and his professor allowed him to do paranormal investigations, and he would, he would submit reports from each investigation that we did. So that kind of kept it going. And uh, just over time, we started to build equipment-wise, getting more and more knowledge, going to paranormal conventions, meeting a lot of paracelebs, and built a website, Facebook page, got a DVR system, started doing house investigations, and here we are today running our own presentations, running conventions, um, just killing it. Uh, I've been doing this for almost... 14 years now, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been such a crazy run. I hit 500 investigations about a month and a half ago, uh, which was crazy. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy to think that I've been on that many investigations already, uh, but it's been such an awesome ride, and uh, we keep it going. You know, This past year for us has been awesome. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of memories, a lot of EVPs. Yeah, I run the, the group like a business. We meet up every week. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hard on these guys. I, I take no crap. Um, I call this group an elite group. We meet up every single week. We go out every single week. <clears throat> We're booked solid house investigations all the time. And uh, this team knows their shit. They know it. They know it very well. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's our organization in a nutshell. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I've been I've been with the group. What coming up on uh, over nine years? Yeah, almost so 10. yeah, coming up on ten. This this year will be ten years, and in September twenty seventeen will be here ten years. Yeah. So yeah, but oh yeah, actually, I guess I should say happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, happy New Year. <laughs> um, we figured we'd start fresh, fresh year, yeah. fresh everything. Here's uh, one of our resolutions. Yeah. So, you can't see, but we have a resolution board up here. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and, uh, well, this is on it. This is on it. So, uh, glad to be back. Hope you guys enjoy yep. the show. And uh, we're kind of going to just jump right into it and go over what we got to do. And we should be we should be doing um, approximately, uh, I believe it's two shows two a shows month. Two shows every other week. It's going to be the second and the fourth week, I believe, is when we're going to air the shows. The yeah. second and fourth yeah. week. Yeah. Um, to kind of build up more to talk about, if we have any cool investigations that we're on, like out-of-state type stuff, we'll, we'll do like a, you know, we'll add that in, 
Yeah. Zoe's yeah, look to our YouTube page throughout all of 2017. As we do trips, we're going to try and do uh, trip spotlights from the location mm -hmm. to get to you guys so you can see like some of the places that we're at and, and things like that. So it, it should be really good. You should see a lot of content coming this way. We've got a lot of um, documentary stuff like Urban Myths and Legends that we're working on that you'll be able to see throughout the year. Some new equipment we're going to be adding. New equipment that we're adding. Yeah, let's talk about that. What are we adding? What are we adding in 2017? Um, well, we're looking to replace, um, we have an EMF meter called the EMF end zone. It's a cheap EMF meter, about $12. Um, we use it kind of as a beginner level trainer. And um, it's okay. It's not great. If you're an amateur group, it's good to start with something basic. But being that we have so many years in the field, it's we use it to train on it, and then we never use it again. So... We're going to replace it with this new EMF meter. It's got the same ranges on it. I forgot the name of it. It's very similar to the K2 meter, very, very close to that. Um, but it's got all the same ranges as the EMF end zone. And, uh, so that's one of the things we're going to be adding to our arsenal of equipment. Um, we're also going to be adding another um, ambient thermometer as well. Temperature theories, it's always good to have extra thermometers out there. Um, we're also going to be adding static pods, which are they're very similar to REM pods, but I found um, it's on lessemf.com. I think they're selling it's either four pods or six, it's like 40 bucks. So we're gonna test them out, see how they work, um, if it's worth the price. I know the price seems kind of cheap for like four or six, yeah, pods. yeah. So I'm curious to see how they work, um, and if they happen to work really well, we'll let everyone know. Um, just to get the price is definitely right. So, and then um, I think you talked about... Yeah, I want to... Yeah, we do control objects, for those of you that aren't familiar. Uh, control objects are whenever you set things up in a home according to, you know, what the claims are. A person's keys are missing, uh, you know, an object gets moved, uh, coins go missing. So what we do is we set up control objects where... You know, we'll put keys in a certain place to see if they go missing. We'll trace them out. So if it's moved, we'll have some kind of evidence that the keys moved. Um, but there's this thing called ghost paper. It's thermal paper, and it's just a pad. Kind of looks like those old, um, those old, uh, not etch a sketch, but the ones you used to draw the magnet pans, yeah, and then you yeah, lift the paper yeah. up to, to erase it. Yeah. Um, you know, we're showing our age. Nobody here knows what that is, probably. <laughs> Um, <laughs> look at <it> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So it's like this magnet paper. You'd write with this magnet pen, and it would just come through, and then you'd lift the paper up to erase it. Um, but it's, it kind of looks like that, but it's thermal. And the theory is that if a spirit puts its hand down, it should, if it transfers heat by manifesting, it should leave it on the thermal paper. Uh, so the the plan is to buy that as a new piece of control object and put it in houses to see if maybe. You know, we can get some kind of ghost finger fingerprint or hand or something yeah, like that. We're yeah. gonna, I think it's really cheap. It's like seven bucks. Yeah, a sheet. yeah. It's we're not probably gonna buy cheap. like four or five sheets. It kind of replaces the whole concept of using baby powder. Right. You know, if you drop baby powder on the floor or someone's dresser or whatever, where they, where they claim to have handprints or footprints, you gotta clean it up at the end of the night. You have to clean it before so, you even start to make yeah, sure all the exactly. oils are off the table. Sure. <laughs> so the thermal paper, if you can, you know. If you go to, say, an insane asylum where you know that there's movement down the hallway, you can drop these sheets down, pop a counter with it, and see now you're not only going to track the movement on the ambient side, but the actual surface, the bottom. You can see where the footprints and prints are going. You can see the direction, um, how big, right? You know, you think child is an adult, something like that. So um, we're, we're really looking forward to, yeah, I'm excited to about testing that, that stuff out as well. So. We're always looking to test new equipment all the time. Anything that comes out, we try to test it. You know, within price range, you know, if something's out there, it's a thousand dollars. It's kind of harder to, yeah. to test something like that but within budget. But um, if anybody ever has something, a question on equipment, or knows of something that's in the field that they don't see on our website, throw us an email. And um, if you have questions on it, we'll, we'll look into it and we'll try to test it out if we can. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I will say my favorite piece of equipment that we got last year was this, our little FLIR, uh, the C2 thermal uh, camera. It's fantastic. Yeah. 
So we've we've been really diving into it this past year. It's been great. They've really come down in price. I remember when we were first looking at just a Fleer digital camera years ago. They were like they were probably over like ten grand. Yeah. And oh yeah. Within the years, they've really come down in price. We actually found the Fleer C2 camera. It's a digital camera. It's no video. Um, it's only it was only like a little over six hundred bucks, which for thermal imaging for a Fleer is really good price. Yeah. So. I mean, that's brand new. That's not used. That's not refurbished. That's yeah. brand new in a box. So um, yeah, yeah, you can check price. that out on our website great as price. well, www.lipaneralinvestigators.com under the equipment. It's, it's under there. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So let's uh, jump into our content that, you know, the work I put in. <laughs> we can ramble for 30 the, minutes the just about this. Stuff we have to go stuff over. Have to go over. <laughs> you know, these people are side top, these corporate people. That's you know. it. They're on... On our ass. On our no, ass. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's start with our urban myth uh, and legend. Uh, we're going to talk about the Alms House Cemetery. Now, the Alms House Cemetery uh, it's also known as the Suffolk County Potter's Field. It's located south of Long Island Expressway at Exit 67 in Yaphank. Before 1870, all of the towns in Suffolk County managed a poorhouse. There was also a farm associated with the Alms House. Across from the house was a children's home for ages two to six. Uh, uh, 16, I'm sorry. 2 to 16. The superintendent, the superintendent, William Jones Weeks of the Alms House, set up the numbering system for the headstones to be able to record and register deaths occurring at both Alms House and the orphanage. Uh, residents of Alms House were required to perform job duties on the farm for eight hours a day, every day, except for Sunday. In 1938, it wasn't mandatory for residents to work on the farm. But many chose to work there anyway. Uh, they used the crops they grew to feed the residents. It had changed its name in 1929 due to the welfare reform law and became known as the Suffolk County Home. It housed the homeless as well as the elderly and infirm. In 1937, the, a new home was built close by on Yaphank Avenue. And in 1994, they opened the John J. Foley Skilled Nursing Facility and the home became... Uh, Suffolk County offices. So that's just a brief history of the Alms House Cemetery and the uh, houses around it. Uh, I'll the history. There have been many claims through the years of paranormal activity occurring here. There have been claims of seeing apparitions in the middle of the cemetery and then just disappear. There have been sounds of children playing in the woods. Shadow people have also been known to be seen here. People that have visited the cemetery are said to have had extreme feelings of getting out. Get the hell out. Paranormal investigators have had evidence of EVPs caught here, as well as seeing a phenomenon called Willow the Wisp. Um, we've actually experienced some of these um, claims at this location. Um, I remember not too long after we got uh, our night vision scope, we were in, I want to say, I guess, the southwest corner of the cemetery, and we heard like a rustling sound in the woods, and we heard like it sounded like kids giggling. Like we're out there like 12 o'clock at night. So we scan over through with the um, the night vision camera. Now, the, the night vision scope, that's not a camera that doesn't record anything. And we saw it looked like a little kid just standing there and just disappeared. It was definitely pretty cool. Awesome, awesome experience. Um, we have picked up EVPs there. The Will of the Wisp is almost like it's gas balls. <clears throat> and they're different colors. Usually... We saw like red, orange, and blue, and it's like a ball of gas that kind of just floats in this different color, you know, whatever color it is, and then just disappears. It's a natural phenomenon, it's not paranormal, um, but that phenomenon does occur at this location. We have seen shadow people here. Um, there has been times where when we entered the cemetery, um, you had that feeling of just get out, you're not supposed to be here. Then we stay, of course. We Let's <laughs> see what the hell that is. So we stayed and kept investigating. But um, yeah, I mean, over the years, I remember um, there they recently put a fence, uh, a wooden fence around the whole cemetery, and um, it's really nice. They have this whole um, sign up, and they have um, this board that tells you all the cemetery numbers, where they're located, and who's buried there. Um, they've really done a lot. Over I remember when I first went there, there was no fence up. It was just the stones, 
numbers on it, they've all overgrown. So over the years, they really cleaned it up and did a really good job with it. So, uh, yeah, it was awesome there. I can't remember. I don't think I've been there. I don't know. It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. It's hard to get there, I and mean, it's easy to get there. Parking's right on the side of the service road, but um, a lot of times cops hang out over there and they see what they're going to kick you out. Yeah. So you back there. And it's a big place. I, don't know to. I know there's not a list of this year that you drop on. Yeah. Get back in there and drop it. All right, so moving on, we have our definition of the week. Figured since we're kind of starting fresh, we would start fresh and uh, talk about apparitions. So our definition of the week is just that. And what that is, is it's a supernatural appearance of a deceased person or animal. It is often too distant to be in the normal range of a person's view and is uncommon to see in the appearance. Uh, a full-bodied apparition shows the entire body of an animal or a person. A partial-bodied apparition are shown uh, more often, but only show part of the body, such as torso or arms or legs or anything like that. Uh, they often appear as white or various shades of white and gray. Uh, sometimes they're even solid black. Uh, usually apparitions can appear to hover in the air. It is rare that apparitions show their legs or feet. And normally the reason why uh, you see partial-bodied apparitions it takes a lot of energy in order for them to manifest. So it's got to be hard to manifest an entire, you know, not a physical body, but an entire representation of, of their of their body. So normally you'll see bits and pieces of it. I mean, it's hard enough to get them to print their voice yeah. on our audio, let alone let them show themselves to us. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so that is our definition of the week, apparition. A uh, quick review, we're going to go over energy loss meter which is something that I actually created. Um, I kept hearing many, many stories of people who are going haunted locations. They have a video camera or a photography camera. Full batteries, they have five minutes and all of a sudden the battery dies. And everyone always claims that the reason for that happening is whenever the ghost or spirit shall manifest it needs energy, and what it's doing is it's drawing me the energy out of your batteries to manifest. So, but there was never a way to detect that, measure that, that reading. So what I did was, I created a meter. It's basically it's a basic voltage meter that um, reads from zero to fifteen volts. Hooked up a nine volt battery to it, turning on, shooting nine volts. It's simple as that. Um, if it's enough power where if there is a spirit or a ghost that's trying to manifest, it can draw out that power from that battery causing that meter to have a sudden drop that you can measure. Um, I don't know why no one in the field has really ever thought about creating a meter that way. <coughs> so we did. We created it. Um, and we use it quite often in the field. Oh, yeah. um, it, it's a great piece of equipment to have. I have to say, out of many investigations, this was one of our originals that we used. This was like since day one. We used to call it the voltage meter, and then over the years we developed it into what it is today. But um, I would say through the years we haven't really gotten much through it. There's been a couple of times where we have had unexplainable drops through the battery. Um, We've had some erratic movement on it. Erratic movement, which is weird too because you have a steady 9 volt battery. Right. It, shouldn't, it shouldn't go up, it shouldn't read any more right. than 9 volts. So. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it works. It does its job. It's an analog meter. It's not like digital or anything like that. Um, I've hit it with high magnets. Magnets do not affect it at all. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a cool piece of equipment. You can check it out on our website. We also sell it. Um, we sell them for about 60 bucks each. If you ever want to buy one, you can email us. You can go on. I believe we have a if you go on Facebook, we have an e-store yeah, on Facebook. It Facebook. should be on there. Yep. <coughs> and then uh, you can purchase it that way as well. So. Yep. If you have any questions, talk to you for email us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. That's it. I like it. I'm a fan. You do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, moving on, we have our Paranormal Article of the Week. And uh, this has been going on, I think it was in November, it was spotted, but uh, I just want to talk about it because I'm a big fan of 
uh, cryptozoology and stuff like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, this year we're uh, mm -hmm. starting a cryptozoology department that I'm going to be right. working on and, and trying to get that off the ground just to add into the group because we don't have enough work to do. <laughs> so that's going to be my little pet project through 2017 to get that, that department set up. So that should be project. Hey, that's a pretty big project. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to mind it for myself so I don't feel so, so it's not so daunting. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited about it because there's a lot of cool there's a lot of cool things out there that that fall into the range of paranormal mm -hmm. that aren't just ghosts that I, I really want to focus on. I think it'd be really cool. Um, so now we're going to talk about the article, which is the Mothman that was spotted in uh, Point Pleasant back in uh, November. I think it was November 20th, and um, this man captured this image of what looked like the Mothman. Jumping from tree to tree, that's how it was described. And so it was picked up by the local news. It was picked up by uh, WCHS-TV, Channel 8, in uh, West Virginia. And uh, yeah, so the local, local news station uh, says uh, that it, it, it's, it covers the Charleston and Hunting, Huntington area in West Virginia. It says that the man driving along State Highway 2 in Point Pleasant said that he snapped these pictures of a creature jumping from tree to tree. Uh, many locals in Point Pleasant believe that it resembles the legendary Mothman and uh, a red-eyed creature that many believe is basically a bad omen, a death omen, anything like that. Um, they do say that with today's technology, it makes it's making it more and more difficult to distinguish what is fact and fiction, which is very true. But according to uh, Jeff Wamsley, with modern technology, it's almost impossible to know for sure if pics are real or not. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks it looks pretty convincing to me. <laughs> and then, but it, it's hard to say. It's it's really. We're gonna have this posted on our uh, Facebook page. So if you wanna get a look at this article and take a look at the picture of this Mothman that's been seen, um, some people do say that they believe it looks like a bird carrying a snake in its in its uh, in its clutches. Really see and, that either, yeah. So. I mean, maybe the wingspan. If you look at what looks like, looks like somebody threw a toy. It's hard. Like somebody took a falcon toy yeah. and threw it across the street, took a photo. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 cool. I mean, there's been a lot. Supposedly, the Mothman was seen back in 1966, 67, I believe Sounds it was, right. yeah, um, right. for the what was it, Silverline Bridge that collapsed in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and uh, now the whole town, which is a town I would love to go visit. Just spend a weekend there oh, yeah, and just see like all the stuff that they have there. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. They've got like the Mothman diner. It's like going to Sleepy Hollow. You know, you go to Sleepy Hollow, you got Sleepy Hollow Diner, you have this, that. Uh, there's a picture, there's, um, there's a statue of the Headless Horseman and all that. It's the same thing in Point Pleasant. They got like this really cool, I don't know if you've seen it before, it's this aluminum looking um, metalwork statue of what they think the Mothman looks like. And it's got like these red, like, Looks like stained glass window eyes, bug eyes. It's really cool looking. Um, but yeah, so that is our little article of the week. Or so yeah. Yep. Mothman. What do you guys think about the Mothman? Leave comments yep, uh, in the in the comment section below. Let us know what you think. Do you believe in the Mothman? Anybody ever, out there ever have a Mothman experience? We'd love to hear about it. So definitely check it out. And then uh, last but not least. We have our Lippy Evidence Vault. So what we're going to do is we're going to play an EVP for you. And then we're going to talk about it and see if maybe you heard what it is that we uh, picked up on and, and how we classified it. And Michael kind of go over it. He yes. uh, was there for that one. I wasn't there for that one. So here is our EVP. Now this was taken back in July 24th of 2008 at the famous Hanging Tree in Patchogue, New York. Cross, Camel. Hey, what's your name, buddy? Oh, look, somebody put a cigar in there for him. Smoke it, buddy. Smoke. So that is the EVP. Uh, Mike, do you want to tell him about it? Yeah, we were at Hanging Tree, and um, they had somebody, I guess, somebody passed away, not at the tree, but. I guess just in general, it used to be like their hangout spot. So they made a memorial by the tree where the person used to hang out, and they left a cigar there for him. And 
to you, one of our investigators say, roll it, light it, smoke it. And he goes, you know, what is your name, buddy? And it goes, Jason. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't hear it at the time, but <clears throat> so we go. it's pretty clear. I mean, we, we have that as a class A, right? I believe so. Yeah, you can play it again. I'll play it one more time for you guys. Cross, Colonel. Hey, what's your name, buddy? Oh, look, somebody put a... Yeah, so that is our uh, EVP of the week. It's Jason. Yep. And uh, don't know who Jason is, but don't know. it's pretty cool. I always like when we get names and, and things like that. There's no Jason in our group no. at, this, at that time or anything like that, so it's not like anybody was calling right. anybody or anything right. like that. So, And it also sounds different from the rest of it. Exactly. Right. It's not exactly digital, but it's got like the way it sounds. It's right. just very odd. Um, but yeah, so that's what we have for the first new edition of Ghost News Network. Uh, hope you guys like us. Hope uh, you don't mind seeing the faces. Hope they don't hope hope they don't offend you too much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's all we have for today. But you can find us on our website, www.liparanormalinvestigators.com. You can find us on Facebook. Just search for Long Island Paranormal Investigators. We have a Twitter. Our handle is at liparanormal. And you can also find us on, I believe, Instagram as well. We have an Instagram now. We do that. We, We're on somebody, I don't know. We don't post on it. Other people in our group post on that. We're social so, media sluts. Yeah, we're, just, we're everywhere. We're just everywhere. search for us. Just you'll find us. We're <laughs> everywhere. So thank you guys for joining us for this edition, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Have a good one, guys. Take care.